everyone, welcome to another episode of TGIS. According to a major online photo sharing and management website, iPhones are the most popular cameras being used. Well, you know what they say, the best camera is the one that you have with you when you need it. But how does the picture quality in your mobile phones measure up to the conventional point-and-shoot compact cameras? We have with us today two noted photographers, Willy Fu. Hi, I'm Willy. I'm from Live Studios and today I'm going to be shooting with the Canon S90. And Jake Chua. Hi, I'm Jake from Shooting Live Photography and today I'll be shooting with the iPhone 4S. And we're going to be having a shootout to find out which of these two is the better camera. First, we will put the cameras and photographers to the test on architectural photography. Next, we will have the photographers take photos of fast-moving objects. Finally, we'll see which camera comes up tops in taking portrait photos. On a compact camera, the first thing you can do is to set your ISO. Uh, if there's tons of light, use a very low ISO. If there's not enough light, use a very high ISO. There's tons of light today, so I'm going to set my ISO to 100. Basically, you will want to switch on the HDR and the grid format for the iPhone 4S. This is to make sure that your composure is correct and your building isn't slanted. With the iPhone, you do not have the burst function. However, you can use the HDR function to capture some motion blur to create some uh, you know, fast action blur effects on your photo. Well, I think for the most major disadvantage, so to say, of compact and phones versus the professional cameras is the shutter lag. There's a slight delay after you press the shutter, so you may have to time it slightly before that. The other thing about photography is also all about light. So you will want to find an area whereby there's a lot of light, enough light to be able to freeze that action. Okay, for the iPhone, we're not going to use the flash to take the portrait shot because with the flash, you, you're going to create a very flat image. So for this shot, we're going to use a constant light from the window or the door uh, to take the shot. With a good compact camera, you've got a manual function which allows you to control the shutter speed and aperture to give you the exact um, exposure that you need. If it's too bright, all you need to do is to increase the shutter speed. If it's too dark, you decrease the shutter speed just to get an exact exposure. Okay, so the guys have got their babies in their hands. These are the results of the photos that they've taken today. Okay, for the architectural photos, I wanted to create some interest in the photo. So for the foreground, I choose this lion statue to actually bring out the interest level. And for the background is to complement the statue of the lion. Okay, and what about you, Willie? Well, the difference with a compact camera is that you can zoom uh, and uh, there's a control of aperture as well. So I could zoom in and I can just focus on one window as a background and I could use a large aperture to blur out the background a little bit. So you guys also got to meet some of the parkour team and took some photos of them? So what I did was I chose the HDR function and I followed through his jump. And you, as you can see, there's a lot of motion blur in the pictures, a lot of abstracts. Okay, so this motion blur thing, can you actually use it in a compact camera? No, most compact cameras don't have uh, the, fan the fancier features and more interesting features like editing capabilities, which uh, in this case the HDR or different apps on a mobile phone has. But we got control over the, sh the shutter speed, so you can easily freeze, have a high shutter speed to freeze motion, and that's what it did over here. And I caught a silhouette of them jumping down. And finally, you guys got some photos of me in the studio. Yes. So let's have a look at that. Okay, for this photo, um, I'm trying to create some drama in this picture because uh, I would choose not to use the camera fl flash to uh, you know, flatten out the picture. So I use the windows and the doors to use constant lighting to light up and have her do some interesting pose and took the shot. Wow, it's a very interesting photo indeed and very interesting pose also. It wasn't easy. <laughs> Okay, what about you, Willie? Let's have a look at your shot. Well, photography is all about lighting, and a lot of time you, you want light from different directions so that it's you want shadows in this case. And what I did was to get you to bring out your arm to cast a shadow on the left side of it to give more focus onto the middle of the face, and that helps it pop out. Mm, okay, so what's the verdict, guys? Which is a better camera to use? For me, I like the iPhone because I can edit the photos on the fly, I can block wherever I am, I can view my pictures. Uh, wherever I am. The smartphone these days are pretty good and they can create pretty decent results. And what's more, you can edit things on the fly and post things up on the fly and share them on the fly. Today, we can all agree that 
for casual photography and then when you need it, the smartphone is probably the better camera because it is always with you and the picture quality is comparable to that of the regular point-and-shoot compact cameras. Smartphones like these are armed with apps that help to enhance and edit photos and of course, the ability to save it straight up to the cloud so no need to panic when your memory cards start to run out. So armed with some creativity and simple photography tips, you too can take some beautiful photos with your mobile phones whenever you want. Thank you for all your suggestions on what you would like to see on TGIS. Here are the two winners of the Xbox 360. Congratulations! We'll be in touch shortly. What was the most useful tip that you have learned about taking photos with your mobile phones? Tell us at www.facebook.com slash Singtel. We have two $50 Singtel vouchers to give away. This is Joanne Marie, signing off.